right, good evening, everybody. We're going to call our meeting to order. Tonight is Tuesday, Ju uh, November 15th. Oh my goodness, November. Um, this meeting is being video and audio recorded for future cable broadcast. Please, if you will, silence all cell phones for the duration of the meeting. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start with the approval of, of minutes, payroll. Oh, motion to start the meeting. Start the meeting, okay. I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So we will uh, move into approval of minutes, payroll, and warrants. Um, if I could request a motion of approval, please, for the minutes of September 13th, 2022. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And if I could request another motion, please, of the approval of payroll and warrants. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And do we have anyone um, signed up for delegation this evening? No, ma'am. No, nope. thank you. No old business. Moving right into new business, and I'll hand it over to Dr. Bailey for the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. First, we have in your packet the personnel report. You will see since last month, we have added one new staff member. We had one person announce their retirement, which will be later in this calendar year, and one person transferred into the data coordinator position. Do you have any questions about the personnel report? No. no. Okay, thank you. Next up, what I like to do, um, as you know, is I like to highlight things that we're doing, especially with the most important work that we do, which is the teaching and learning. Um, so we wanted to highlight um, a, a curriculum uh, program, it's called Foundations, and we have a couple of teachers with us tonight. I'd like to ask Lynn Aviza and Jasmine Nunez if they could come to the podium, um, because they're just going to review with us what Foundations is and how they're utilizing it. Lynn is a grade three teacher and Jasmine is a grade two teacher. And Leah Chesney, Mrs. Chesney is going to introduce them, their principal. Um, Hi. Thank you so much for um, giving us this opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, we wanted to talk about foundations because it's sort of a supplement that we have to our ELA curriculum. Um, Michelle, can you just go to the next slide? Um, we really wanted, um, Jasmine will explain a little bit more about um, the phonics instruction when she gets her, um, her little slide. But we really wanted to make sure that we were looking at explicitly teaching phonics at a pace that was reasonable. And this program does connect really well with our Lexia program. Most important to me was that the kids would be able to have a consistent foundation for when they might need special ed services. So this actually can be a through line all the way up to students in middle school if they need this type of service when they need extra help for reading. So I'm going to go to uh, Lynn. She's going to talk about um, the grade three curriculum for foundations. Good evening. Good evening. Um, explicit whole group phonics instruction was new to third grade, so we were a little surprised when we found out that Foundations is moving up. But I have to say we're finding it to be a very valuable piece in conjunctions with, conjunction with Wonders. Um, having the ability to instruct the children on the structure of words and how words are spelled and why they're spelled the way they're spelled um, is giving them a better opportunity and a stronger um, ability to decode words as they're reading. And we all know that, you know, you spend your early years learning how to read and then you get to third grade and it's you're learning to read new and great things. So being able to um, decode these words and um, understand what they're reading is building on the comprehension skills. It's helping with their fluency. I'm even seeing in my small group instruction, um, the children waiting for their friends, I know, not to jump in because they're persevering and they're getting these words down by themselves. So I'm very proud of them and I'm very happy to be using the Foundations program. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, so as a second grade teacher, I've actually had some experience with Foundations. 
um, in the prior years when I started teaching in a cushionet. And in second grade, we noticed that there's no one curriculum out there that covers all the components of reading. And Foundations does a really great job introducing students on how to find familiar word chunks. It, it also um, teaches them the seven types of syllables, which we found that Wonders did not teach them. So we're finding that there's more carryover into their reading and their writing, especially during um, small group teacher time. I've had a lot of kids that are like, oh, Miss Newland, here's a glued sound. Like, oh, we learned about this in Foundations. And Leah had mentioned before how um, it's really important, especially in K1 and 2, to have explicit phonics instruction. We found that when we did um, the phonics portion of Wonders that it, the pace was too fast and the kids were not carrying it over into their work. And now they're actually like getting very excited about marking up their words and figuring out what word chunk goes where. And like Lynn said, um, they are definitely encouraging each other because they are seeing the carryover from um, their foundation's lesson into their small group work. Thank you. And Great. Wonders, as you know, is our new ELA curriculum. This is a supplement to that, and we just wanted to highlight that. Does anybody have any questions for the teachers or for Mrs. Chesney? How long have we been using it now? Um, did you say about 10 years? Could you, could you just go um, to the podium? This was a program that was invested in, I, I would say, some people have told me 10 years. I don't know, because I, you know, as you know, my first year mm -hmm. was last year. So they have been using it for a while. Um, there's a lot of training that was going in it, going with it. So, I, but do you know how long have you been here, Jasmine? Seven years. So, so it's been about six. Six years. Okay. Second year, like, but I think kindergarten was using it before, mm -hmm. and then it was first grade. So yeah, it might be closer to nine, nine, nine years. or ten years. Nine or ten years. Okay. Any other questions? No. I just want to thank. You. Uh, Linda Visa and Jasmine Nunez they're two terrific teachers and we're so fortunate to have them and for them to take the time tonight to explain a curriculum that they're so passionate about I know that I get excited when I walk into their classrooms they're always so welcoming to me and it's always a pleasure and a joy to see the joyfulness of our students learning in those classrooms so thank you for all that you do and I appreciate you coming out tonight to explain that Thank you. Thank I, you. Madam Chair, if I could take one thing out of order tonight, mm -hmm. because I have a couple of um, people who need to go to a training tonight, and I want to make sure we squeeze something in. So I want to take other items that may not have been anticipated mm -hmm. at the time of this meeting posting. Um, as you know, about a week ago, Desi nominated um, the elementary school for the possibility of being um, recognized nationally, and it was something that we had to apply for. Well, we were just notified this week that we did receive this recognition, and we are one of two schools in the state to um, receive this very prestigious honor. Um, and you know, there's, there's a lot of um, thanks to go around, but just to, to discuss a little bit, and this is a very informal, informational time for us right now at this meeting because as time goes on, we will have more formal presentations about this, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but schools are named by their state agency, um, up to two schools per state, for exhibiting the following common characteristics. A poverty rate of at least 35% for the selected year, demonstrated high academic achievement for two or more consecutive years, met or exceeded state standards of adequate yearly progress for at least two consecutive years. So we know um, with our recent MCAS scores that we reviewed with you that we had significant growth at the elementary school um, and that was a big piece of it and we are truly honored. Um, there's a conference in February in Indianapolis which we're looking at. Um, there's quite a bit that we have to you know move forward with but you know, there's lots of um, thanks and recognition to be passed around um, our teachers, namely, and you know, they're the ones that are day in and day out with our kids, but I would be remiss if I didn't call to the podium tonight um, our curriculum director, Angie Regieri, as well as our principals at the elementary school, Leah Chesney and Juliana Passetto, 
just to give them a few minutes to talk about from their perspective what led us mm -hmm. to get recognized for this so th again this is very informational and in informal tonight we will do something a bit more formal and there will be press releases etc but we're super proud of our district um, we've worked really hard even through covid and this you know the work has started as you know we've stayed the course um, and this is this is something as someone said to me that happens once in your career if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. So this is huge for those three ladies standing up there as well as many people in our district. So I will turn the podium over to them because I'd love to hear about the great work. They're all doing wonderful work in our district. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this because I am so proud of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think one of the um, first things i mean we were new right so one of the things that we we're told when you're new is to not change a lot of things but it's a testament to how accepting the staff is and how hard working the staff is that we got away with changing a lot of things and everyone was on board um, to do their absolute best to kind of follow us along in this journey um, so i'm going to let julie talk a little bit about what we talked about before about the uh, morale boosting, but I think one of the things that we did right away was embed PD weekly with the teachers to give them a voice, to let them talk about what were some of the things that were concerning with them. Angie was part of this process as well as they were sorting out how to use a brand new curriculum that could very well, it has so many components, it could be very well, very overwhelming. So I think those are some of the things that really helped the, the kids to, continue to succeed and the teachers continue to get the most out of their children. And Julie can talk about the morale. She's the type girl. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously human nature, right? If people don't respect you, if people mm -hmm. don't believe in what you're doing, they're not going to do for you. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that we focused on is really boosting the morale over at AES. And there's a lot of different things we've been doing because when the staff are happy, the students are happy. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's All right. laughs> Makes sense. Good evening. Um, yeah, we're all just so so proud and excited about this news. Um, and it just goes without saying that so many people put in so much hard work um, to make this happen. And I just think about all of the changes that have happened over the course of really um, probably the last five years since uh, Superintendent Bailey came to us and started really looking at what are some of the strategies, um, what are our initiatives, and uh, what are we going to look at, and those main pillars of the work that we've been doing. And um, she's just really stayed the course um, with the curriculum alignment and the SEL piece and then the community building. Um, and obviously this team right here was just huge and really um, taking those taking those pillars and running with it um, including all of the staff at AES and when we think about all that we went through and I, I know sometimes it feels like we get tired of talking about COVID but the amount of growth that happened with our staff during that time the amount of technology PD that happened um, the amount of training in the new curriculum that took place and then I agree the embedded uh, professional development that is happening at that school every day with the principals and the teacher teams is just it's it's um, it's just it's really powerful and it's the teams have really come a long way and um, you can just you know we've talked about this you, you feel the vibe and um, it's just really good stuff so Congratulations to everybody because this truly was a team effort. And if I could give a shout out as well to the school committee because it starts with you. You've been so supportive of the things that we've asked for. The town has been so supportive. We desperately needed curriculum in this district. Um, so it, the work has been ongoing and there have been a lot of asks, but I think we're starting to see uh, the fruits of our labor, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I want to really thank the school committee, but it's so much more. It's every single person who works in the district, every single person who is part of the team serving the children lunches, cleaning our schools, and making it a great environment to, to teach and learn. 
it, it's just the person the person in the front office who answers the phones it, it's just every person who is part of the team deserves recognition for this because this is quite an honor um, it's very prestigious and again I could not be more proud of the ladies there as well as many many other people that we will be thanking as time goes on uh, but I just thought it was really important that we were notified after this agenda was came out and I thought it was really important that the committee know that we have some things to do before February um, the conference but it's very very um, a happy time in the district for all of us congratulations Congratulations. It's so exciting. And it's not always easy to stay the course and to make change. Um, change can be hard for a lot of people. And so, um, but we've been all very dedicated to the path we're going and the vision. And um, so, thanks for taking us there. Um, it's really, really exciting to see. So, we're all thrilled. If I may, if yeah. you, it, honestly, I, I, I think that it wouldn't have been possible without the staff here. It, the, the teachers, the paras, everybody, like Dr. Bailey said, there is no way that we could have done this. We just were steering the ship. That was it. They did all the work. Yeah, so. for sure. Great. Well, congratulations to everyone. Yeah, it's really exciting. <clears throat> Finally, yeah. <laughs> some recognition after all these years. Do you have any questions at this point? Or uh, no, no, I'm thrilled. Thank you. So excited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're honored. Um, I just know that the ladies, two of the principals, have a training at seven tonight, and I wanted to make sure they got to that training. Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, it doesn't, as oh. you know, I did. Oh. <laughs> you do need to sleep when at the some kids point. Go home, but they're still working very hard, so I thank them for everything they they do as well. Um, but again, you will hear more about this as we move forward with it, but um, we're super excited about it, so thank you. We, sh we should be. Thank you for letting yep. me take that out of water. Absolutely. Um, as you know, Mr. Missler's report is in there. I mm -hmm. want to read the whole thing for the technology update. Um, I know you had a chance to look it over in your mm -hmm. packets. Does anybody have any specific questions that I can maybe pass on to him? Um, there was a something I read in the report. One of the points. Let me mm -hmm. see if I can find it. Where? Um, let me just see if I can pull it up. He talks about E-rate, um, about offsetting costs. That we're going to have some savings based on that. Um, with they move forward from the our network switch infrastructure planning stage to purchasing funding and procurement. Um, there was one point where he said they they discovered some things that will be improved um, yes. but but it doesn't go into the specifics do you know which number um, I'm trying to find it in my okay. e-docs and I'm having look. a hard time finding the report excuse um, me Patrick can you put in your password for me oh oh thank you um, yeah <gasps> yeah so point seven on data reporting oh, okay. so um, thank you Yep. So, so the October state data reporting has been submitted, which is yeah. great. Yep. Um, but there was some process, old, I think, processes uncovered. Yes. Um, and would just be curious, and it, it doesn't have to be tonight, but would love right. to hear some of the things that were discovered and how we're, how we're making improvements on those procedures. Okay. And you know, to go along with that, to sort of piggyback on that point, um, point number five, he talks about creating a technology repository using the Google Shared Drive mm -hmm. to provide how-tos, best practices, and procedures as we move forward with everything to do with technology. And so far, this has been extremely helpful to get everyone in alignment with um, how to fix things, how to do things, um, more protocols that are mm -hmm. aligned, et cetera. He also discusses our monthly newsletter that we started sending out, and he has a tip in there, a, a monthly technology tip that would be helpful for families as well. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about the phone vendors. We're looking into a new phone system, as you know. Um, and then, of course, his last point is um, he recently <laughs> became a dad. And, yeah, I didn't have know, any advice for him on any um, advice on getting needing some more sleep. sleep. But his son is adorable and growing already so quickly, and um, 
you know, he continues to work hard, but he's not getting a lot of sleep. So, as you can imagine, with a newborn. Yep. Any questions besides the one that Mrs. Downing brought up? I think maybe it was a couple meetings ago, he had kind of outlined like a long-term vision and some mm -hmm. things he were looking at. Yep. I, I presume at some point we're gonna come back to that and mm -hmm. kind of try to land on where we're going. Yes. On some of that stuff. Yeah. And actually that too. is something that we're in the budget process right now. Sure. So I mm -hmm. think he is looking at sort of a 10 year plan and what can we do this year and you know, so that it's not all at once. So I know that's in line with the budget, but I certainly will bring that back to him. Great. Any other questions? Okay, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Business manager's report. Good evening. Good evening. Chairperson Down, school committee, thank you as always. I'm going to try to keep this brief since I took up a lot of your time at the last school committee meeting, and I want to leave some time on the the table for uh, Shelly to talk about the school nutrition program. So I'm um, just going through um, my update here. You know, fiscal 23 budget, there's about 75% of the budget left to spend. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's right on track. Um, what I did want to kind of point out is I broke out high school tuitions in this little chart here. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, about $2.75 million is tuition, or of our budget is tuition that we pay for um, students in a cushion to attend high school. Um, it's almost one sixth of our budget. We're talking about how to approach this number in fiscal 24 and whether, you know, it belongs on under the scope of a cushion public schools or more towards the town side. Um, but I just want to highlight this number for you right now. Um, as far as the fiscal 24 budget goes, um, we're well underway of building our budgets. Our, our administration all have their budget sheets. Um, they have comparative numbers between previous years, they have details of, of expenses spent in previous years, and they are working hard to build um, requests for fiscal 24, and which are due as soon as next week, and following that week, Dr. Bailey and I are gonna meet individually with each department to discuss their, their wants and needs, and um, from there, you know, we'll, we'll take all the numbers together and see, see what we can fit in, see what we need to cut, and have further meetings and further mm -hmm. discussions, but um, collaboration is the key in this process, um, and you know, it's it's a newer process that I'm I'm sort of introducing. As you, you heard from the elementary school principals, change isn't always great or well received. But I think this is going to be great for our budget moving forward, and it will build an efficient budget. And I'm confident in that. Um, moving on to facilities, sign replacement. So we still don't have our brand new sign out front. It has it was shipped um, actually last week, and it has reached. Um, our vendor, they need to install the software and make sure there's no, you know, bugs in it before they install it. We've ran a trench, we've ran, ran electrical out to the front, so we are ready to go as soon as they bring it on campus, and we're excited for that. Um, the AES roof replacement, so again, you know, thank you to our AES staff for the patience with this ongoing project. You know, there's, there's seems to always be a little surprise that interferes with um, the teachers or the, or the classrooms, but they've all been great. Um, the punch list process was completed on November 2nd, which was kind of, the, kind of like a final walkthrough of everything that's been done, everything that needs to still be done, um, what met expectations, what didn't meet expectations. This week, the um, construction company has been going through the punch list and addressing all those needs. They expect to repunch on November 21st or shortly thereafter, which will mark, you know, um, substantial completion they'll receive a certificate our warranties and guarantees will come into play and then you know we're we're, we're almost we're 99 percent done from there um, what's important from there is that the school and the towns work together to understand what it's going to take to maintain the roof so that we do not void our warranties and guarantees that we put so much money into um, there are there is annual maintenance there are things that we need to look at year in and year out and we need to make sure um, to stay on top of those and, and you know again build that into the budget where needed. I'm going to skip down to food services now so in the month of September and October so for September we served 1047 breakfasts and 11,125 lunches October those numbers slightly increased to 1,312 breakfasts and 11,938 lunches um, our student population or demographic it consists of 41 percent free 6% reduced and 53% paid. 
Um, almost consistent for lunch as well. That was for breakfast. Lunch is 37% free, 7% reduced, and 56% paid. Um, we all know that lunch is free here, but we still are required to report mm -hmm. um, on, on the needs of the students and what category they, they would fall on, under. Um, that being said, our September reimbursement from the state and the federal government was $29,779, and our October reimbursement we're anticipating to be $32,398. Um, as we continue throughout the year, I do want to shed more light on um, the inflows and the outflows of um, revenues and expenses for the cafeteria program. Mm -hmm. We're only two months into the school year, so it's tough to tell. We're, we're at break even as far as the program goes, um, but you know we front load a lot of expenses to get going for the school year, and, and things should should start to um, you know flatten mm -hmm. out and and, and portray our actual our needs and whether we're, we're generating income or, or losing money. Mm -hmm. um, and that will speak to the money, the nest egg that we have and how we want to spend that going forward. Transportation, um, no major news to transportation. Um, I did want to make you aware that we, we did speak to Amarillo Bus Company um, on you know making sure safety is first priority and not to be afraid to write up any incidents on the school buses um, that may take the safety away from the drivers of the students. As a result, we've seen an uptick in um, bus write-ups and bus suspensions. As a result, um, we continue to work with them to, to monitor the issue and see how we can solve this. Um, concerns are capacity, number, number of students on the buses, um, you know, the different routes and the lengths of the routes. So um, we can discuss this further, especially in subcommittee with the ongoing conversations of um, who do we want to offer transportation mm -hmm. to, you know, what what expense does this you know result in right now for F for FY 24 to add a bus it would be about sixty nine thousand dollars um, so we need to take that into consideration again just you know bigger picture um, with the FY 24 budget and planning appropriately um, and then so just to just to clarify so um, or confirm rather the work that we talked about a couple I think meetings ago around mapping out the current stops trying to find efficiencies there that's discussed that will be discussed in the budget subcommittee and then reported back to you guys yeah okay and, and if I, I could just add also policy. a policy and policy as well yeah, okay yeah. I was alluding to both I apologize. okay yeah. no problem and we'll require a vote for oh if we change a, policy there's already a policy we haven't been enforcing so Correct. if we change the policy right got it. but there were other things on the table such as switching the bus routes yep. and stops right. and things right. like that as an alternative yep okay good all right, and then um, a couple more items here before we get to school lunch. So town Hall, um, as the, the FY24 budget becomes more of a focus, the town administrator's office has asked all town departments, not just the school, to come up with three versions of the fiscal 24 budget. Um, the three versions are a level funded budget with mandated increases, um, a 5% cut after mandated increases, and a 1% increase with mandated increases. Um, so, you know, we're doing what we're asked. We're putting those numbers together and seeing what we can what we can come up with. We'll pass it along to the town and we'll have conversations from there. Um, but, it, you know, it's it's going to be a process to build this budget. And, you know, mm -hmm. we, gotta, we have to be efficient with our money. So, um, last but not least, um, surplus of library books. So there's another vote of surplus from um, the principal of AES. There was a pile of library books that have become damaged, moldy, and mildewed um, over the years of keeping them. I'm not sure where they were kept. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're asking that we can vote these to surplus so that um, the central office and superintendent's office can decide what to do with these books. Um, so That requires a vote. And that sheet is on the table in front of you, Chairperson. Okay. So we have to do a vote to... Accept the surplus. Accept the surplus. The surplus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I could request a motion, please, to accept the declaration of surplus. I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Is there any discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. And, you know, Things like declaration of surplus, what it's doing for us is it's freeing up space in our buildings, um, you know, to either add a desk or add a space where we can, you know, 
utilized for IEP meetings or just store files appropriately. So you know, we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of these surplus phones um, where, where we can, because uh, there's no point in holding on to things that are obsolete or, you know, right. just question, question dust, really. So. Um, actually, I just had one question. The pods that are out there, yes. I, we had talked about them in previous meetings. When can we expect them removed? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, two-thirds of the, the inventory in there has been declared as surplus. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, we're working through taking pictures of just the general items that we can post on the website and make it available to the public for um, whatever we decide. Mm -hmm. Last meeting, we, we um, unofficially decided we'd offer the items up for a dollar an item. Um, and then from there, after a certain time period, we'll be able to dispose of what wasn't, um, you know, mm -hmm. claimed, and we can get rid of those those storage units. So, do you think by spring? Oh, definitely. Okay. By spring. Yes. Okay. Hope. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I hope so. I plan so. So, okay. unless something major okay. happens, then uh, definitely by spring. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now the next agenda item is um, school nutrition. So I'm just going to go over a quick few fun facts that were helpful to me when you know learning the school nutrition program coming from the accounting side and you know not being involved in the schools and things like that so um, very quickly before I hand it over to our school nutrition director um, a Christian at public schools participates in the school breakfast program and the national school lunch program both programs are administered by the food and nutrition services of the United States Department of Agriculture um, all school breakfasts and lunch Lunches must meet federal nutrition requirements. And specifically to breakfast, the goal in improving access to school breakfasts is to reduce food insecurity for students, to increase test scores, to improve student health, and to lessen the distractions in the classroom. So that's the purpose of you know why we have not only offer lunch for breakfast and why we are trying to encourage our students to, to utilize the, the meals that we serve and to participate. Um, for the USDA, on average, students who participate in the school breakfast program eat a breakfast of higher nutritional quality than students who eat breakfast elsewhere. Um, not all children eat breakfast, and those who do have shown improved moods, increased alertness throughout the morning, and lower hunger for up to four hours. As far as lunch goes, in 2010, um, the Hunger Free Kids Act was passed, which based the new school meal standards on independent expert recommendations from the Institute of Medicine. Um, this act aimed to address childhood obesity, um, and, and as a result, requires national school lunch programs to offer both fruit and vegetables um, every day of the week, offer whole grain rich foods, offer only fat free or low fat milk, um, limit calories based on the age and grade of children, and um, focus on reducing amounts of saturated fats, trans fats, added sugars, and sodium. And then last but not least, the third page of this little memo is just a snapshot on the reimbursement process and you know where it's gone in five years. So in 2018, for free and reduced lunches combined, we were getting $5.89 reimbursed. So, so um, that's, that's combined. That would be two meals, one free lunch and one reduced lunch. Um, in 2023, that amount is up a dollar and seventy-six cents to seven dollars and sixty-five cents. Um, for breakfast, that that same time span from 2018, we we're getting four dollars and eighteen cents for a free and reduced breakfast, well, and paid, excuse me, and that has increased to five dollars and fifty-four cents. Um, so that's up a dollar and thirty-six since 2018. So that's just an idea of our claims and the increases and in reimbursements that we've seen. Um, trend over the years um, and as far as that goes I want to hand it over to our school nutrition director Shelly Mello. Um, mm -hmm. Shelly come on. Good evening. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me my name is Shelly Mello. I've been employed with the, with the Accushionate School program since 2003. For those of you who do know me you know that I take pride in my program. I take pride in all I do for the school nutrition program. And I do the best we can to follow the USDA guidelines and, and make the program fun as well. So the students like the food and we're following the guidelines at the same time. I have forwarded some of the nutritionals from mm -hmm. the products that we have and the items that we have. And you can also see in there that they're all credited by the state. 
So we can't serve an item that we think they're going to like, that the state has not, the, the vendors have to send their information to the state and they have to be state approved items before we can mm -hmm. put them on our menus. Um, without meeting the requirements, we would not be able to use those products. Um, again, we're very fortunate because Massachusetts is one of five states that approved the universal free lunches again. Um, but we have the same obstacles. We have the supply chain is mm -hmm. locked, backed up. We, there's many supplies that we can't get. Mm -hmm. And um, with the prices of everything going up, food insecurity is also going to to rise. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or? I, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. So Shelley, um, it was me and myself and, and John that had brought this up. Okay. And I'm just wondering, with the amount of money it costs, let's say for, and I'm just using an example, let's say French toast sticks for breakfast. Um, if, does that cost like $3, but we're getting almost $6 for the breakfast, and so we're making a profit of like $2, four, four and six, is, is that what, ha are we using all of the money that we're getting back, would be the question that I have for each of the meals. Well, Do you follow what I mean, or am I? If the reimbursements and any of the money that the programs make also has to supply labor funds, any equipment that breaks down. Okay, so that, so it's, it's, not it's also it's not covered. It's yeah. everything. It's gonna help yeah, if you could, because oh. that, that's my curiosity, because my, my main point here, and just so everybody knows, is that if we can do, I don't know, and I'm, again, making this up, the mozzarella, string cheese if we if that's costing let's say three dollars for the mozzarella string cheese and we're profiting let's say i'm making this up a dollar 25 could we possibly do organic mozzarella for the extra 25 so we we make a smaller margin of profit is that possible to do or is it not so just alluding to the reimbursement so you know the max amount that will be reimbursed for a, a breakfast is a free breakfast for severe need which is two dollars and 67 cents so Understanding your situation, if we bought mozzarella sticks that cost us a dollar fifty, and we're getting two dollars and sixty cent, sixty-seven cents back an item, you know, can we improve the quality of the food? That we exactly. Have? Right. Uh, Is that possible? It, it's a, you know, it's a double-edged sword there because, as as Shelley mentioned, you know, the school lunch program needs to stand on its own. We do not receive any local funds for our school lunch program. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I can't speak on the money that we've accumulated in the past. But as I, I mentioned, through October, we're at break even, and that includes the salaries for the staff in the, in the school lunch program, it includes the supplies, the, the utensils, the paper goods, um, and it includes the, the food items. Um, we don't include, we don't allocate janitorial costs to the, that it takes to clean up the area. Um, you know, we can't forecast, you know, equipment repairs and maintenance. I mean, we, that's a part of every monthly, mm -hmm. you know, expense anyway but we don't know when something's going to break down and how expensive that's going to be to fix so we need to be careful um, you know where we go with this that being said there are many food items available um, they do go through procurement through the state and have to abide by the USDA uh, nutrition guidelines and some are available to us based on the, the, the supply chain some are what we did find is that not all of the organic items that we looked at compared to what we offer are actually healthier. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to steal the show from Shelly, but I, if you want to speak <laughs> no. more on that. So, so Shelly, you know, I, we... I did actually put um, two samples of yogurt in there. Mm -hmm. One is the one we serve, and one is an organic one. The organic yogurt actually had more saturated fat and more sodium, and the same amount of, of protein. How about the sugars? Because that's... So sugars, what you really want to look at is added sugar. And not so much sugar because sugar is from carbs and carbs come from, from fiber. It will come from starch. It will come... So it's not just so... When yeah. you look refined, at... Refined, sort of refined added sugar is what you're concerned about. Right. So it's the added sugar about. that you want to look at. And 95% and of the products we have have no added sugar. The donuts have added sugar, don't they? They do not. They have to. <laughs> They're lying, then. They're just straight out lying. 19 grams. I've tried to make donuts without sugar. They're yeah. not very good. <laughs> so the USDA has uh, 
has has made it so, and it's a law, that they have to put added sugar on the label. So if there's no added sugar on the label, then there is no added sugar. I think I'm just going to disagree with that completely. Um, <laughs> agree to disagree. Uh, yeah, let's just agree to disagree. Uh, I just, see. I feel that, I feel like our kids, now I'll take, I have two kids in the system. Sugar is nice. And my son liter has a meal at home has you know an egg sandwich or something we try to keep low sugar, yeah, sugar right. low carb in our house and I, I know a lot of families that are doing that as well but then he comes home with packages of donut like plastic things in his backpack like seven of them <laughs> and he's eating all these donuts when he gets to school and and this is what brought up this whole situation is that you know there are families that are trying to keep low sugar for their children so that you know their brains can develop and there's been all these new facts that have come about about how bad sugar is and then they come to school and they just have six packages of donuts. So now they do always have an option so it's not here's your donut. So it's him that so, so how do we fix that that he doesn't option. have an option can I sign a waiver or something? Bagel has very yeah. Uh, obviously, the kid—if the kid's gonna have, you know, a bowl of fruit or powdered donuts—they're gonna go with the powdered donuts. But is there a way, as a parent, that we can say, no, he can't. He, they're not allowed. Um, if I could just—isn't there a way, as a parent, that you can look to see what they're eating, or is that not part of the breakfast program? Not for the is it free. Only part of the lunch program. So my school bucks, which yeah. is our, you know, our portal that allows parents to add money to our students' accounts mm -hmm. for school lunch or breakfast, allows you to see if your student purchased lunch or breakfast. With money, right? With, with Well, no, but if they went through the register, free or, free or paid, okay. it'll say whether they participated. What, the, what it doesn't do right now is it can't tell you what items. It just tells you if they participated. Um, and honestly, I think the key here is participation. I mean, as a provider for breakfast and lunch, Shelly doesn't know if the student's having breakfast at home right. or at school. And, and I'm wondering if we can we fix this. We need to offer it and we need to provide it because as these studies have shown, it, it does, you know, great things for the students in the classroom to their focus, to their attention. Um, if they haven't learning. had breakfast. If they, excuse I, me, I misheard you. If, if they haven't had breakfast yet. Right. However, I'm wondering as a district, how many kids have already had breakfast and this is their second breakfast? or even their third. I mean, my, my son gets up at 6, he eats at 6.30, and then he eats at 7.15 before we leave. And then he comes here and has more. So like, how, how is that happening to other families as well? Like, how do we figure this out so our kids are not eating what, our, what parents don't want them to eat? Mm. I mean, how do we figure that out? I mean, do, can we order breakfast if, if we're running out and something happens and our child doesn't have breakfast? Can we send a text or something like that saying hey my child didn't have breakfast so yes he's allowed to have breakfast or is that too much so this is just conversation a parent that was really did not want them to have breakfast they have breakfast at home and that's the way they want it they could always email me and i could put a notation on the pos system when they came through huh. the only problem with that is in that case there if they if they didn't for one day then there's a trouble one day and they call and I'm not in the office. Right, right, right. It just office. becomes a logistical nightmare. So I or if they, they go to the nurse and the nurse sends them snap down with that note in there, I would have to refuse that. Right, because, right. Because of the mm. parental. Maybe we can take this I offline think, and just I think the district will work with any parent who has concerns. I know, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. there's issues with health or weight or mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. If there's very specific individualized issues, certainly I would encourage parents to work with the nurse to work with our nutrition director. Um, but we do want to encourage our kids to eat the breakfast and the lunch if they're hungry. And we do have kids who come into school every day and some kids are hungry and they do get the food. But they um, get the unhealthy version. I just want to fall back on all the or, options uh, that we offer are, are sanctioned by the USDA. Yeah, I know, but let's not pay attention to that. I mean, all of these acts I know, but come these menus and build these I get it, Patrick, but I, I completely disagree. I mean, I have two nutritionists that I work with, and they lost their mind when they looked at the things that, my, that Dylan was eating. So, again, you know, what the USDA and the FDA is approving, 
you have nutritionists, like I'm sure a pediatrician could even voice her opinions on this. Like, should we be offering? She, I don't think the pediatrician will because it's out of her jurisdiction out of her, okay. and it's the USDA regulations. So I highly doubt our school pediatrician will get involved in this. Um, Something that we didn't go over, and I'm not going to go crazy into that, mm -hmm. is the, the meal patterns that we, we provided you as a handout. You know, again, it requires us to provide a certain amount of fruits, vegetables, grains, meats, and milk per week under a certain amount of calories, under a certain amount of sodium, under a certain amount of fat. But not sugar. Hmm. I mean, that plays into, I'm not mm. an expert, but that plays into all of these items. I mean, not really. Natural sugars. Right. Um, but not 19 grams. There's no healthy food that has 19 grams of sugar, even though it's not added sugar. You know, even an apple or um, a watermelon that's super sweet, um, pineapple, they're not 19 grams of sugar. So that's... Again, I'm not... A, I know you're not a nutritionist. I, I just... I have experience in this with nutritionists, and so I'm just wondering if maybe if we do have like a separate meeting just with with Shelly and, and 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 just figure out maybe something a little bit more healthier or maybe we don't give the option of the super sugar foods maybe we just give you're getting the apple in the in the bagel and if you're starving you will eat it or maybe not but again so but we have to come up with that happy meeting that, medium um sure a happy medium would i would be fine with that yeah the, the sample of if you're hungry, you'll eat it, doesn't always work. Right, I understand. And as soon as I said that, right. I get it. Because there are doctors out there that are just like, they can eat McDonald's every day, just get them to eat. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that. When they switched everything over to whole week, back in 2012, I believe mm -hmm. it was, we watched students take their burgers out of the bun and throw the bun away. Mm -hmm. Take the hot dog out of the bun because that's not what they were used to. Mm -hmm. That's not what they wanted. Yeah. And it was gross. And <laughs> So even the kids that we knew were not. Yeah. There was there was food insecurity at home. They they were thrown that bun out. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not really. I know you're working super hard on this, but I I really think, for me personally as a school committee member, if we had another meeting that just went through this, so we can say as a school committee that we have gone over this in detail and these are the best options for our students. Well, I guess no that's what. my question. Um, are there other options? I mean, are, I would assume there's a menu of options that are being provided and we're selecting. There's a, how, do we, how do we go through that selection so process, I guess? Collaborative. So the mass buyers group mm -hmm. will bid on certain items and they have to pass these specifications right, to right. be able to be bid on. Sure. And then they give us that list of products and that's what we have to pick from. Okay, okay. And that's Shelly's job to, to go right. through it and right, everything. Right. I, I, further, right, is, yeah. You know, with those products, we still have to build according to these meal patterns. Right. Or we don't meet, you know, regulations. Right. And it's we not are, easy. We don't I, receive reimbursement. We, we can't get credit for serving mm -hmm. lunch and breakfast or being a part of those programs. So, you know, it's, it's one step leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And right now we are, you know, in compliant with all of those steps. Um, I'm, I'm certainly open again to exploring the menu further and I know Shelly is Absolutely. too. And I know we mm -hmm. looked at things as this conversation mm -hmm. came up when we prepared for this meeting. Um, I think not everything is as cut and dry as it sounds. Right. Switching mm -hmm. to organic doesn't necessarily mean better and more healthy, you know, but we, we can certainly do some research and, and see what we can bring to the table. I don't want to bore everybody today on no, this, no, but maybe not, a separate. I, I do think maybe it's, we were originally going to have a workshop. Correct. Um, and I think maybe we do that and we can okay. dig in a little bit more uh, into the menu and, and, and understand some of the nuance that you're talking well, about. Not to take your place or go over you or anything like that, just for us to know, like, this is the best we can do and that's yeah. it. We can schedule yeah. a workshop. Okay. Yeah, we'll perfect. Okay. Thank you. Great. And I think if we're going to do something, we want to also make sure that we're creating a system, if we're talking about parents restricting the kids. That's sustainable. That is right, going to create right. mayhem for the staff. Absolutely. So that I cannot be a nightmare should, or anything like yeah. that. We just need a, more discussion, I think, to see if yeah. it's, anything's possible. How long should we approach it? I don't find the system being broken, mm -hmm. so I don't, you know, I don't, I don't feel as though we should be going out repairing something that's not broken. And I don't think it's broken at all either. No, I, I just I think it might be, be able you know, to so be approved. Improved. That's all. 
I think it really is a balancing act between having children eat the food rather than throwing it in the barrel versus, you know, some of the concerns that you have. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that it's a real tough balancing it is. act mm -hmm. that, that it nutritionists is. face. So, um, so I, you know, but unless you find there's a problem with, with, with waste, you know, in other words, you know, the students are not eating, uh, you know, the, you know and, and then that would be a problem because, again, the goal of the, of the program is to have good nutrition. Right. And, and that's one of my concerns with taking out certain items that the kids right. look forward to having. Mm. Sure. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can get organic donuts. Yeah. I've lived with a nutritionist for years. My daughter, my daughter's a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I sell. I've heard all these. <laughs> Shelly does take into consideration the teachers in the classroom and things like that. You know, she could offer you know yogurt parfait cups with this, that, and the other thing. But now when the kindergartners are getting them all over the desks and the books and the things like that, and the teachers are screaming at them and wasting their time to clean up, now we're taking yeah. away from the classroom. Yeah, yeah, I it's a balancing. It's, it's such a yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we do take all of these things into consideration. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Shelly yeah. Did a, a tremendous job. Yeah, I, and I'm, no like I said, I totally appreciate all the work that's being done. I just. I just want to make sure that we're doing our diligence as well. Okay. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you. you coming in Thank and explaining. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. You I don't repair Great. my farm equipment unless it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we're on item C, which I'll welcome my school committee members if you have any reports to share the public this evening. No, nothing here, okay. And there are a number of communications outlined in your agenda that are in our packet that you can refer to. Um, we do have executive session tonight, which will, we will be returning after executive session. Mm -hmm. The executive session is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. Uh, this evening votes may be taking, taken on the Accushionate Teachers Association custody, custody, Custodial <laughs> Unit, <laughs> Accushionate Teachers Association Cafeteria Unit, the Accushionate Teachers Association Paraprofessional Unit, and the Accushionate Teachers Association Secretarial Unit. Um, so if I could have a motion, please, to move into our executive session. And will we return? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we will be returning. Okay, so the motion should yeah. read that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we take that motion, can I just make one announcement that I forgot oh, to make? Oh, yes, sure. So tonight is um, dine-out night for Fairhaven Class of 2024 at the Captain's Place right here in Akushnet, and until 9 o'clock. So if anybody is hungry after this, if you want to go to Captain's Place, 20% goes to uh, the Class of 2024. So, awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, so if I could have a motion, please, to um, move into executive session, and we will be returning after. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to do a roll call. Okay. Scones? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Howcroft? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. 624. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So moved. Second. Do you need a roll call on that? Yes. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Harcroft? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And just reporting back from our executive session, we, um, the committee took uh, votes on the Cushionet uh, Teachers Association uh, custodial unit, cafeteria unit, paraprofessional unit, and secretarial unit. Um, and those are for the three-year period from July 1st, 2022 through Ju June 30th, 2025. So reporting on those votes for the custodial unit, we had four yes, one no. Cafeteria unit, three yes, one abstain, and one no. Uh, for the paraprofessional unit, we had four yes and one no. And for the secretarial unit, we had four yes and one no. So with that, we're gonna close our public, e uh, public meeting this evening, just noting that our next uh, school committee meeting will be Tuesday, December 6th at 5.30 here in the John Tavares Library. So if I could have a motion to close, please. So moved. Second. Second. 
All right. Okay, that's that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.